Thank you. So, I will go launch straight into cases. So, the first case is that of a 72 year old diabetic ESRD who was on dialysis since 2014. Initially, as so often happens, through a temporary cat. Then he got a left brachiocephalic AVF and in, he developed an infection, it was removed, went to a femoral for some time, then a left internal jugular temp cath. In February 2015, he had swelling of the left upper limb to an extent that the AVF became unusable. So he dialyzed himself through a femoral catheter for almost four months, got fever, absent flow, swelling of the lower limb, a DVT, and he came to us in the hospital in septic shock, which subsequently we found was a staphylococcal bacteremia. His uh, fistula arm looked like this. Yeah. So this was where the fistula was. The arm was so swollen, the skin puckered, uh, edematous and red that the vein could neither be palpated nor seen and obviously it was not cannulatable. So he was treated with antibiotics, he was stabilized with a right femoral catheter for dialysis and then taken for an angiogram. And this is what the angiogram looked like. That's the left brachiocephalic. At its midpoint, it's reduced to a thread. Fortunately, a wire went across it very easily. And I could dilate it up to 12 millimeters. And this is the result after that. And I could use this fistula 48 hours later for dialysis. This is his arm. Now the vein is easily visible and the thrill persisted. He followed up with me till February 2016, then disappeared, and I thought that he must be no longer he must no longer be, until he turned up last month, and he was still using that fistula for dialysis. The vein was like this, and he was continuing to get good dialysis. He came to me for an intercurrent illness, so there was no doubt about what one does with a lesion of this sort. One has to go in. The fistula was not usable. The arm was swollen. In this situation, there wouldn't be a doubt about going in for a central venous plasty. I go to my second case, that of a 12-year-old boy with end-stage renal disease due to FSGS. He started dialysis in 2014, initially from a femoral, then a right internal jugular cath. He got a left radiocephalic AV fistula in 2014, November. And in April 2015, because of poor hygiene and perhaps because of the pruritis that he had all the time, he had infected his fistula arm. He had severe cellulitis, thrombophlebitis of the fistula vein, and he grew enterococcus from his blood culture. He needed to give rest to the fistula for some time, so we used a cuff tunnel catheter in the left IJV. And then, three months later, he was able to return to using the AVF. At his center, he had two further episodes of swelling and pain, and on each occasion, catheters were used. In August 2015, he came back to me with a swelling of the fistula arm with prolonged bleeding after needle removal and inability to extend his elbow because of severe pain and developing of contractures. We did an angiography. The fistula was normal, but there was a complete thrombotic occlusion of the left brachiocephalic vein at its origin. I attempted an angioplasty. Nothing would go. No wire would go. So what the vascular surgeon did was to put a PTFE graft from the left axillary to the right axillary vein and divert the flow. The venous hypertension that he had resolved within 48 hours, and he started to use his fistula again. In March 2017, he came back to me saying, now he had swelling of both upper limbs, the left more than the right, increased bleeding again, elbow contracture, and now an inability to use the fistula for dialysis. He was also complaining of dyspnea, which had not improved with, ex with aggressive ultrafiltration, and he was referred for a femoral tunnel catheter in this situation. We thought that the graft must have thrombosed, but a Doppler showed that the graft was normal. Now, a resident attempted to cannulate the femoral vein, the left femoral, and it was impossible. There was, the wire would go, but as soon as the catheter was attempted to go, there was severe pain. When I took the patient to the cath lab and attempted a cannulation there, it looks like the external iliac vein is good, but when I could not pass any wire through it. When I went frame by frame, actually the external iliac vein is completely occluded over here. And this is a dilated internal iliac which is draining the collateral and then drains into the common iliac vein here. So this was impossible. We did a CT venogram which showed a stenosis of the right brachiocephalic and subclavian veins which gave us the answer. The flow 
had, which was being diverted from the left side to the right, had now man made the right subclavian stenosis manifest, and so he could, uh, he had developed bilateral swelling. I went from the right femoral vein, my wire slid into the external jugular, so at least it told me the external jugular was patent if I wanted to put a tunnel catheter. This was the state of the subclavian and brachiocephalic, but a wire could go across it. We plastied that. The result didn't appear to be great. This part opened, this part I couldn't see really well. We also put as a standby a cuff tunnel catheter in the right femoral. It took nearly 15 to 17 days for his venous hypertension to resolve and then he resumed use of this fistula which he is using till today. So typically it's said that an ipsilateral AV fistula may make a central vein stenosis manifest. In this case, what this patient had, the AV fistula flow, we diverted it with a graft to the opposite side and the opposite side subclavian stenosis became manifest in this situation. It's, of course, had we done a sent a CT venogram before placing the PTFE graft, we might have picked up the fact, the, the subclavian stenosis on the opposite side, which the CT subsequently did pick up. But this patient did manage to use the fistula after the bypass graft for about seven months without any venous hypertension. So it was an atypical presentation, and this is another atypical present reported in the literature as the, fistula, the pleural effusion that would not go away. This appeared 16 years ago in the NEGM. Subsequently, there have been two other reports in 2005 in the NDT of the only manifestation of a central vein stenosis being a transudative pleural effusion in which no other cause is found. My last case, a 50-year-old woman with end-stage renal disease largely contributed to by her chronic NSAID use. She started MHD with a temp catheter in 2013. Her left radiocephalic AV fistula failed. A right cuff catheter was used for seven months, in, got infected, was removed. We put in a left catheter. On the right side, she had no veins suitable for fistula construction. So a left brachiocephalic AVF was constructed and used from August 2015. In May 2016, she developed prolonged knee bleeding after needle removal, and the nurses actually were putting tourniquets onto this fistula to stop the bleeding, something that we otherwise don't do. The venous pressures with 16 gauge needles at blood flows of 300 were 240. Now, Kedoki says venous pressures in a fistula aren't used, but if the central vein is stenosed, ultimately all veins drain to the central vein. So in this situation, an elevated venous pressure is a significant uh, feature. The physical examination only showed us multiple collaterals on the chest wall. And this is what the angiogram showed. Now, it would be tempting to believe that this is the problem. But as Dr. Heman Mehta also mentioned, even when we put needles here, the bleeding would persist. And when we look there, there is a cephalic arch stenosis and there is a subclavian stenosis as well. So we did plasty them both. And she got a fairly good improvement after that. The, venous, the bleeding stopped. The venous pressures came down from 240 to about 180 at a 300 flow, and she was maintaining a good quality of dialysis. This year, she came back again with recurrence of high pressures, bleeding, and needed tourniquets again. The examination findings were similar, and so we did a repeat angiogram, and both the stenosis had recurred again. So that's there, and that one. And once again, we went ahead. This was the cephalic arch. At 16 atmospheres, it didn't open. It needed 22 atmospheres to open up like that, as did the subclavian. So this is what Kedoki says. The preferred treatment for central vein stenosis is uh, percutaneous angioplasty. Elastic recoil, uh, if it uh, is often responsible for a recurrence, if it occurs within three months, one may consider a stent in this situation. I have done 13 angioplasties in central veins. I failed in five chronic thrombotic occlusions. And when I looked at the survival, that's what it was showing. At 12 months, about 52% was still patent. And it's in fact, that is what all the literature from the world shows, that the one-year patencies for, uh, can be after an angioplasty can be as low as 7% to up to 40%. So what this case reminded me of is that whatever you do, whether it's an angioplasty or a stenting or even a stent graft, when we do a successful angioplasty, that patient is going to repeat, require a repeat procedure down the line. And last of all, this image, this is a subclavian stenosis that I was attempting to do, and we heard about wires breaking. 
my guiding catheter tip broke here and it sailed away and settled on the guide wire. So my cardiology colleague showed me what to do. We put in a 2 mm balloon, brought the balloon into that tip of the catheter, inflated it and pulled the catheter back. And that was then required to remove the whole assembly. So if I had to summarize what messages, I, what I learned from the cases I presented, central vein stenosis is a complication of devices. The left brachiocephalic, we don't use subclavians anymore. So the most prone position for central vein stenosis seems to be the left brachiocephalic vein and that's what the literature also says. Asymptomatic lesions will be brought to light by an ipsilateral AVF but in one, one case that I showed, it was the diversion to the contralateral side. Any time we do a procedure, we are going to require a repeat procedure down the line. Thank you.